You were my Shay, and you were my Bay. You're the only one who knew how to tap my bongo. You told me you loved me, why did you leave me all alone? You tell me you need me, along with my man meet on the phone. But Shay, I refuse, you must have me confused with some other guy. My woke wiener's burned, and now it's your turn to cry. Cry me a river. Oh, the divorce. The divorce is finally happening between Shay Shay and Skippy Bebe. And I think my singing voice is getting exponentially worse. I just can't hit the same notes as Justin Timberlake. But I know we have a lot of new subscribers here on the channel. But if you have been following this channel for a while, this news that broke last night was absolutely no surprise to you. We were one of the first... I'm pretty sure we were one of the first to predict the divorce of Shay and Bay. We called the disillusion of these nuptials back in November, maybe December. Once the Damar Hamlin situation happened back in January and Shannon Sharp had yet another emotional breakdown, I swear, I swear, this dude, this dude is the most emotional man I have ever seen. It makes perfect sense why he calls himself Shay Shay. I used to make fun of Shannon Sharp for being a grown man and adopting the name of an eight-year-old girl. Hey, it's me, Shay Shay. Skippy's my former baby. I guess, I guess I shouldn't make fun of him anymore because the name actually fits. Eight-year-old girls are emotional. Hell, 38-year-old women are emotional. So it only makes sense that a grown man who calls himself Shay Shay is emotional too. When working in the business of television or podcasting, YouTube, there is one thing that is required above all else, chemistry. If you're a solo host, you got to find a way to build chemistry with your audience. Your audience needs to feel like they know you. They have to feel your energy. If you're co-hosting with someone else, it's also imperative that you have chemistry with your co-host. Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith, they had excellent chemistry. Their divorce was a bit different than this divorce between Shay and Bay. The divorce between Skip and Stephen A., that was caused by one of the most common reasons couples get divorced. Money. Oftentimes, financial issues can be resolved. The couple, they might get divorced now, but years later, once the money situation resolves itself, the couple can come back together. There were even rumors a year or two ago that Skip Bayless could be reuniting with his first husband at ESPN, Stephen A. Smith. Financial issues, they are not the cause of this divorce between Shay and Bay. Their relationship issues go a bit deeper. There is a deep-seated emotional pain here. This is one of those couples who could not get past the seven-year itch. They don't communicate effectively. They're not meeting each other's needs. My inside sources tell me one of the biggest issues in this relationship between Shay and Bay is their needs in the catering room. No surprise there. I'm sure neither one of them is getting their needs met. My sources tell me Shay has a strong affinity for the supersized cucumber, while Bay likes to enjoy the grilled woke wiener topping it off with his favorite dessert, the Palmy Brown Cake. Last night, the New York Post broke the news that Shannon Sharp would be leaving Undisputedly Woke. This news sent shockwaves throughout social media. All these lonely men who mistakenly refer to Shay Shay as their uncle instead of their aunt. They were devastated by the news of this departure. How can Unk abandon us during the middle of Pride Month? I've held off spanking my wanker for weeks, stockpiling my reserves, so I had enough sauce for Shay's coverage of the NBA Finals. Well, I do have some good news for those lonely men. Shay Sharp. He will continue working through the NBA Finals. Once the Finals are over and the Miami Heat shock the world by beating the Denver Nuggets, Shea Shea will put pen to paper and finalize his divorce from Skippy Bebe. There is so much to unpack here. For starters, the tension between Shea and Bay is the primary reason for this divorce. Shannon Sharp, I think he still had a couple of years left on his contract. He came to terms with Fox Sports on a buyout. Now, what does that tell you? He wanted out, and he wanted out now. According to the New York Post, Shannon Sharp wanted to be viewed as an equal to Skip Bayless. He wanted it to be their show instead of it being Skip's show. <laughs> you know, 
This kind of reminds me of the situation with Don Lemon at CNN, where Katie Rue Collins wanted to be viewed as an equal. She wanted to be viewed as a star, when in reality, Katie Rue was the help. There is no denying the fact that Shannon Sharp is extremely popular in the black community, but when it comes to more mainstream appeal, Skip Bayless is the star. Undisputed is Skip's show. Skip is the star. Shay is the co-star. Skip Bayless is responsible for generating the topics. I'm sure he has strong influence over the production of the show, which guests they bring on, who they're going to talk about. Shannon Sharp, he wanted those responsibilities to be split between Shay and Bay. Basically, Shay Shay wanted a 50-50 marriage. Bay Bay wasn't interested. That probably led to a lot of the tension that we have seen on TV the last few months. But here's the problem if you're Shannon Sharp. You don't have any leverage. It would be one thing to make all these demands if Undisputedly Woke was dominating the ratings. It would be one thing to make all these demands if you're constantly making headlines in the mainstream media. You're bringing attention and awareness to the show. Shannon Sharp wasn't doing any of that. I spend a lot of time every day, seven days a week, looking through my news feed. At least once a week, sometimes twice a week. Someone from Woke Take on ESPN is making headlines. Most of the time it's Stephen A. Smith. Sometimes it's Chris Russo or J.J. Reddick. Every once in a while, Kendrick Perkins will confirm that he's a grade-A shitfuck and generates some mainstream media interest. But you know how often I see stories about Shay and Bay? Never. The only time they generated controversy was when they were having a lover's quarrel on air or when Shay Shay threw a temper tantrum trying to fight Ja Morant. Shannon Sharp had no leverage. Ratings for this show absolutely suck. We're talking about Bamani Jones' level of huge embarrassing failure. Last Friday, 127,000 viewers. Last Thursday, 139,000. Fox is paying Shay and Bay millions of dollars, and they're not producing. But KC, the show does well on YouTube. Fox doesn't care. Advertisers don't care. 300,000 views on YouTube... It doesn't pay anywhere close to what 300,000 views on television pays. Another issue that caused tension between Shay and Bay was Shannon Sharp's weird crush on LeBron James. Now, Skip Bayless, he has this weird obsession with LeBron James too. I am no defender of the King of Queens, but Skip Bayless has been attacking LeBron James for 20 years. These constant attacks, they hurt the feelings of the emotional Shay Shay. I am sure Skip felt neglected too with his TV husband having eyes and desires for another man. Neither one of them could be objective when discussing one of the biggest stars in the NBA. Hell, one of the biggest stars in sports. And the problem when you can't be objective, you lose credibility. But I feel like there's something a little bit deeper here. Don't get me wrong. The primary reason for Shannon Sharp leaving Skip Bayless is the irreconcilable differences between the two. In some marriages, not all, but in some marriages, there is this imbalance of power. I'm sure you've heard stories before about the housewife staying with the shitty husband because she couldn't sustain her current lifestyle financially. Maybe she has spent the last 20 years raising the kids. She hadn't been working. She would go from living a life of luxury to barely getting by. Some women feel it's easier to stay. Even though there was a power imbalance between Shay and Bay in terms of the show, that does not mean Shannon Sharp doesn't have options. This goes back to the same theory I have on this, on this shift happening in legacy media. I think we're going to continue seeing big names leaving these legacy media outlets. Last night, as we were finishing up dinner and getting ready to watch Breaking Bad, again, I love that show, but as we were sitting down, TV was on Fox News. It was Tucker Carlson's old time slot. We sat there for about 10 minutes watching the show. Joey Jones is hosting this week, and when I tell you he is god-awful, he is god-awful. And I hate to say that because I have a lot of respect for Joey Jones and his military service to this country. If I remember correctly, I think Joey Jones lost both of his legs fighting for this country. Joey Jones should be admired and respected. But as a primetime cable news host, he ain't the answer. He seemed nervous. The entire show just felt unnatural. It was it was just bad. Since the departure of Tucker Carlson, Fox News, they have been rotating hosts every week, trying to find someone who can attract an audience. They're like the damn Daily Show, throwing random people in prime time, hoping someone will work out. This is not CNN we're talking about. 
This is not CNN who can't convince anyone to manage their dump in prime time. It's Fox News, one of the biggest channels on cable, and they can't find a superstar to put in prime time? Why? Why do you think that's the case? I don't know the exact reason, but maybe, just maybe, more and more stars are realizing they're better off on their own. I think Shannon Sharp came to this realization. I think he realized it's not worth waking up at 4.30, 5 o'clock every morning to spend two and a half hours arguing with Skip Bayless. Why work for someone else when you can work for yourself? Make your own schedule, book your own guests, discuss topics that you want to talk about. Shannon Sharp has a popular podcast. He does really well here on YouTube. He's already set financially from his NFL career. He's probably making just as much money, if not more, doing his own thing. So why would he continue working at Fox? Why would he continue going into a studio every week when he doesn't want to be there? To be honest with you, perfectly honest here, I'm happy for Shannon Sharp. I know we have a lot of fun here on the channel joking around and making fun of him, but I'm legitimately happy for him. I'm happy for anyone who makes a decision that will improve their quality of life. Good for him. But I think we're going to see this happen with more regularity. Pat McAfee is going to be the exception, not the rule. I've been saying for over two years now, Stephen A. Smith is leaving ESPN. I am 100% confident in that prediction. It's just, it's just not worth it anymore to work for a legacy media outlet. Why deal with all the bullshit? Why deal with all the constraints when you can build your own platform and do what you want to do? I've had a lot of you guys ask me, what's going to happen with Skip Bayless? I really don't know. Skip is only effective when he has a nemesis. He needs someone to play off of. I would imagine that he regrets not reconciling with Stephen A. Smith a couple of years ago. He chose money over success. Skip Bayless is unique. You can't just pair him with anyone. USA Today, they came up with a list of possible replacements. One of their top choices was Nick Wright. Nick Wright? If you're looking for a huge embarrassing failure, why not just hire Bamani Jones? Fox needs a star sitting across from Skip Bayless. They need a star who can challenge him. Good news is, whoever they choose, expectations will be low. Looking at these ratings, undisputed, they have nowhere to go but up. But give me your thoughts. Shay and Bay finally divorcing. I think Shannon Sharp's going to be better off here. As far as Skip Bayless goes... I think this might be the beginning of the end of his media career. Were you surprised by this announcement? Do you think replacing Shay Shay will boost ratings? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.